John chapter number 5 sa aklat ng Bagong Tipan this morning John chapter number 5 and let's look at verse number 23 John chapter 5 verse 23 now sometimes kapag nagpipreach merong mga messages na pwede mong pakinggan na kahit na hindi ka nagno-notes eto yung mga message na hindi ganon. <laughs> Kung meron kayong notes na gusto mong i-take down, um, it will be very good kasi marami tayong mga verses na titingnan. Uh, John chapter 5 verse 23 And the Bible says that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent Him. Kung Tagalogin natin ang Bible, ang sabi ng Bible, upang uh, parang, parangalan ng lahat ang anak, or igalang ng lahat ang anak, na gaya rin ng kanilang pagpaparangal sa Ama, ang hindi nagpaparangal sa anak ay hindi nagpaparangal sa ama na sa kanya'y nagsugo. And so, nagalit ang mga hudyo sa kapanahon ni Kristo dahil hinilot ni Kristo ang isang tao, ang isang mama na uh, yung kanyang katawan ay wasak dahil sa epekto ng kasalanan. And God healed this man Through Jesus, of course, Jesus healed this man during the Sabbath day. And if you know anything about Jewish law, Jewish customs, the law of Moses, you're not supposed to work on Sabbath, on Saturday. It's their holy day. And uh, of course, we are Christians and we don't celebrate Sabbath as our holy day. What's our holy day? Sunday is our holy day. And that's the Lord's day. So today is the Lord's day. It's not the pastor's day. Okay? It's the Lord's day. And uh, uh, Jesus healed on the Sabbath. The Jews were upset. And uh, they better hold on to their horses because they're going to get more upset here in a little bit. When Jesus calls God his father, now they're really upset. Because the sense where Jesus called God his father is not like the Jewish idea that God is our father because he created everything and we are all his offspring. No, Jesus is saying no. If my father works on Sabbath, I, the son, work on Sabbath. If my father heals on Sabbath, the son can heal on Sabbath. What God is doing, the son can do. And I am the son. He is the father. And if God is the fa- if the father is God, then I am God also. And that's the import. That's what the Jews were uh, really upset about in verse 20, uh, uh, verse 20, um, well, let's see here. Verse 18, therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only hath broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, in that elevated sense, in that sense that he is one with his father. What the father is, so is the son. If the father is eternal, the son is eternal. If the father is transcendent, the son is transcendent. If the father is omnipotent, so is the son. And so he makes, making himself, John reports, making himself equal with God. The deity of Christ is significant because he is not just man only. 
no, mga mga nagtuturo na si Jesus Christ ay tao lang na kinasihan ng Diyos no, siya at ang kanyang ama ay iisa at ang pagkakaisa nila hindi lang pakikipagtugma o unity ng layunin ang pagkakaisa nila ay sa kakanyahan they are one not only in purpose they are one in essence So whatever God is, that's the Son also. And they share that deity, that divinity, that divine nature. Now today, we're going to look at the divine names and titles of Jesus Christ. So you cannot honor the Son if you do not know who He is. And he that honoreth the Son, honoreth the Father. So I'm going to give you a lot of Bible verses. We're going to go through this. Now, when I was a Bible college student in Indiana, I came across a book published by the Jehovah Witness Watchtower Society. And uh, in the book, it's called Jesus the Greatest Man. Well, you know, he's, he's more than just the greatest man. <laughs> But in the book, the Watchtower book, it said that nobody in the Bible called Jesus God. That's what it said in the book. Nobody in the Bible called Jesus God. Well, if you don't read your Bible, you will believe the, the, the Watchtower study notes <laughs> and you'll be confused. So I want to show you that many people call Jesus God. Look over in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Jesus is called five different things there. Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So, He was called the Mighty God. Well, you say, well, you know, Pastor Bill, the Mighty God is not almighty. <laughs> He's just the Mighty God. Uh, and this falls in line with the doctrine and teaching of the Watchtower and Bible and Tract Society. Kasi yung pananaw nila kay Jesus Christ ay malit na Diyos. Pero... Tingnan mo ang sinabi ng Habakkuk. Go over to Habakkuk chapter 1. Habakkuk chapter 1. Joel, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. So almost to the end of the Old Testament, the book of Habakkuk. Chapter number 1, verse number 12. Look at what Habakkuk says about the mighty God. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 12. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord, Jehovah, my God, mine Holy One? We shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them from, for judgment. And O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. So, sino yung Jehovah dito? He is called Mighty God. So, whoever the Mighty God is, that's who Jehovah is. All right? And Isaiah called Jesus, the Messiah, Mighty God. That's just Isaiah. And we know from Habakkuk, Mighty God is Jehovah. So, there's no such thing as a small God. And a big God, that's, that, that makes no sense. Okay? No, Jesus is mighty God. And that's the testimony of one prophet. Go over to John chapter 1. What does John say about Jesus Christ? John chapter 1, verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, kasama ng Diyos, yung verbo, yung salita, and the Word was God. Who said the Word was God? That's the testimony of John, the Apostle. So Isaiah called him God. John called him God. 
Who's the word? Sino yung word na was with God? Sino yung word na was God? Jesus Christ kasi yung word was made flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Verse number 14, John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So sino yung nagkatawang tao? at na nabuhay siya kasama natin sabi ni John sino yon si Jesus Christ yon God the Son and he was God testimony ni Thomas look at John chapter 20 see somebody said nobody called Jesus God well you you're already three <laughs> three to zero <laughs> John chapter 20 verse 28 John chapter 20 verse 28 And Thomas answered and said unto him, Thomas is talking to Jesus, the resurrected Christ. He said, my Lord and my God. So, aking Panginoon, aking Diyos. So, tinawag ni Thomas na Diyos si Jesus Christ. O, tatlo na yan. Isaiah, John, Thomas, What did Paul? What did Paul call Jesus? Go over to Romans chapter 9. Think naman ang Romans chapter 9. So, bakit tayo naniniwala na si Jesus Cristo ay Diyos? Well, meron na tayong apat na testimony na tinawag siyang Diyos. <clears throat> John chapter number 9. Ah, I'm sorry. Romans chapter 9, ito yung testimony ni Paulo. Romans chapter 9. And verse number five, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, comma, God blessed forever. So siya ay Diyos na nagpapala sa kawalang hanggan. Look over in 1 Timothy Doctrine ito ni Apostle Paul, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter number 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So ang Diyos ay ipinahayag o nagkatawang tao, ipinahayag sa laman, ang Diyos. All right? So he called him God. God was manifest in the flesh. Now, if you have another translation beside the King James, uh, some of the translation put he was manifest in the flesh because the critical Greek text got rid of uh, got rid of one letter <laughs> and that one letter caused the the whole change and it's less clearer he at least while well, he was manifest in the flesh that's at least he was manifest in the flesh they got the manifest in the flesh down but that makes no sense because you and I are manifest in the flesh right now So what difference does it make that he was manifest in the flesh? It makes no difference. But when you say God was manifest in the flesh, that's a whole nother doctrine. Okay? So God was manifest in the flesh. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Is Jesus God? Well, let's look at Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So did Paul call Jesus God? Yes, he did. Well, you say he called him a great God. That's not, he didn't call him the greatest God. Well, that's silliness. But he is God. <clears throat> the great God. And you can look over a uh, uh, concordance and look for the phrase great God. And it'll be all over the place. <laughs> great God. Uh, but unto the Son. I'm sorry. So 
Isaiah called him God. John called him God. Thomas called him God. Paul called him God. God the Father called Jesus God. Look at Hebrews chapter number 1. Hebrews chapter number 1. And see, this is important because if you don't believe the Jesus of the Bible, you're not saved. <laughs> you can't be saved by uh, another Jesus. You have to believe on the Jesus of the Bible. And He is God manifest in the flesh. Hebrews chapter 1, here's God the Father's testimony about His Son, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 but unto the Son He saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of Thy kingdom. God the Father called His Son God. So you have the testimony of God the Father. This is the Father speaking to the Son. You have the testimony of Peter. Go over to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Far cry when somebody says nobody in the Bible called him God. Called Jesus God directly. Well, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ... To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Whose righteousness do we possess? The righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so Peter called him God, you see. So Jesus is God. Jesus is divine. He is God the Son, equal with the Father in His divinity, in His essence, in His being. He's not diminished. He's not subordinate in His essence. Now, Jesus willfully submits Himself to the Father. So when it comes to the divine essence, there is only one God. And He manifests Himself in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So if you don't know who the Son is, uh, you can't be saved. And so Jesus uh, is evidently God. He's called God. He's also called Lord. He's also called Lord. Go over to Zechariah chapter 12. I want to look at the names of the divine names of Jesus Christ this morning. The divine names of Jesus. You've got to honor the Son. If you cannot honor Him, you're not going to honor the Father. Look at Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. The burden of the Word. Uh, I'm sorry. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel. Whose word is this? The word of the Lord. The word of Jehovah. <clears throat> for Israel saith the Lord which stretch forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. This is Jehovah the Lord. Look at verse number 10. What happened to Jehovah the Lord? Verse number 10 and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one that mourneth for his only son. What did they do to Jehovah? They pierced him. They nailed his hands on a cross, they pierced him. Well, how do you pierce Jehovah? How can you do that? Obviously, Jehovah became a man, you see. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of glory, whom they crucified. 
according to 1 Corinthians. Uh, go over to uh, Psalm 68. Psalm 68. So was Jehovah crucified? Yes, he was. How could that happen? How could that possibly happen? Well, you see, Jehovah became man and gave his life a ransom for many, according to the Bible. Uh, Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Now, this entire psalm is about God, is about the Lord. Look over in verse 1. Let God arise. Look at verse number Four, sing unto God the praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, which is short for Jehovah. That's his name. Uh, verse six, God seeth. Verse seven, O God, when thou wentest forth. This is all about God. Verse nine, thou, O God. Now look at verse 18. Thou ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, and hast received gifts for men. Wait a minute. He ascended on high and led captivity captive. Who did that in the New Testament? Go over to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. What did Jesus do when he resurrected from the grave and ascended into heaven? Look at what the testimony is. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captives, captive and gave gifts unto men. Uh, who's that talking about? Christ. <laughs> the gift of Christ. So... In Psalm, it was Jehovah, it was God. But in Ephesians, it's Jesus Christ, you see. He is, Je He is Jehovah, the shortened form of the word Lord. Go over to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Psalm 102, verse number 1. Again, this is about the Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And when you see the word Lord in the Old Testament, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's the name Jehovah. Sa likod ng pangalang Lord na capitalized sa King James, ang pangalan dyan, Jehovah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, O Jehovah. And uh, so this is speaking about Jehovah. Look at verse 25. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, of the heavens are the work of thy hands. So lahat ng kalikhaan ay gawa ng kamay ng, ni Jehovah. Verse 26, They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture thou shalt change them, and they shall be changed. Tandaan ninyo yan. And, and, and uh, go over to... Uh, uh, verse number 27 but thou art the same you know, so yung mga tao um, magiging luma rin ang tao balang araw um, malalagas din ang sangkatauhan pero ikaw Jehovah hindi ka nagbabago thou art the same thy year shall have no end walang katapusan ng iyong uh, Um, mga taon. Uh, the children of thy servants shall continue, their seed shall be established before thee. So, who is the enduring one? Jehovah is. Go over to Hebrews. Go over to Hebrews. Chapter 1. Who fulfills this scripture? Well, I'll give you a clue. It's not the Father, and it's not the Spirit. <laughs> Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 10. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 10. And the Bible says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They shall all wax old as doth a garment. 
as a vesture, thou fold them up, they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fall. But to watch which of the angels saith he at any time, sit on my right hand, and I will make thine enemies thy footstool. This is talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus fulfills the picture of Jehovah in the Old Testament. David was writing about Jehovah. But Paul in Hebrew says it's talking about the sun. Look at Isaiah chapter 6 verse number 1. This is interesting. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. Isaiah 6 1. Who did Isaiah see in the throne of heaven? Well, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, and above stood the seraphims. And they, you know, basically cry, holy, holy, holy. You remember that? So who did Isaiah see sitting upon the throne? The Lord, according to Isaiah 6, 1. But if you go to John chapter 12, John tells us who Isaiah saw. John chapter number 12. Who did Isaiah see? Well, John chapter 12. And verse 37, John chapter 12 and verse 37. But though he hath done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. So who is the he that's doing a lot of miracles that people are not believing on him? That's Jesus. Remember that. Verse 38. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled which he spake. Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded our eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart, uh, and be converted that I should heal them. These things I said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Who's the him? It's Jesus Christ. Isaiah saw him, his glory, and spake of him. This is Jesus Christ. So basically, John is telling us Isaiah saw Jesus, his glory. So is Jesus God? Yeah. Well, he's called the Son of God. He's called the Son of God. And he's the only begotten son. That's an important word. The only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, when you get saved, you become a son of God. You become a child of God. So why is it important that Jesus is the only begotten son? Because we become sons of God by adoption. Jesus is not the Son of God because he had, God the Father adopted him. Now, do you know that angels are called sons of God too? The Bible calls angels sons of God. But see, they're made sons of God by creation. God created them, and so he's their father. He's their creator. But God did not create Jesus Christ, you see. And that's what the Jehovah Witnesses would teach. They teach that God created Jesus first, and then Jesus created everything. But that's not the testimony of Scripture, you see. He is the only begotten Son. Jesus is begotten of the Father from eternity past. Now let me ask you a question. Can you be a father without a son? No. So whenever God the Father became Father, that meant that He already had a son. So if He's Father from everlasting, that meant Jesus is Son from everlasting, you see. And so they share the same essence. Jesus is Alpha and Omega, 
right? I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord. You know that passage of Scripture in Revelation? Go over to Isaiah 44, verse 6. Isaiah 44, verse 6. Isaiah 44, verse 6. So sa Revelation, Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. But look at Isaiah 44, verse 6. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, the King of Israel, his, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last. Beside me there is no God. And so we know that Jesus Christ is God because He said He is the first and last in Revelation. And where did that come from? That came from Isaiah 44, talking about Jehovah. What's the conclusion? Jesus is God. That's the conclusion there. See? He is the great I am. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Saan nang galing yung pangalang I am? Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Jehovah said, I am that I am. It's one of God's sacred names. I am. And Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. I was, I was there before Abraham was even born. <laughs> so the Father doesn't work alone. The Father works through the Son. Siya ang nag- nakikiisa sa Diyos, hindi lang sa layunin, kundi sa kakanyahan, sa essence, sa divine nature. Nakikiisa ang Panginoon sa Diyos, sa kanyang gawa, sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Now, Biro mo, imagine this. If Jesus is only a man, you are putting your trust in man. We know what the Bible says about putting our trust in man. It's a snare. We don't put our trust in man. We put our trust in God. And then, nakikiisa rin si Jesu Cristo sa karangalan ng Diyos. Meaning to say, kung igagalang mo ang ama, hindi mo pwedeng lapastangan ng anak. Hindi mo rin pwedeng lapastangan ng banal na Espiritu ng Diyos. Dahil ang tatlong ito ay iisa sa kajosan. Pero yung mga hudyo na nais na patay ng anak, inaakala nila na sa pagpatay ng anak, ginagalang nila ang ama. Habang tinatanggihan nila ang anak, at kinokorek sila ni Jesus Christ, no, sabi ni Jesus Christ, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Ipagpapatuloy natin ito next week. Sa ngayon, tinin- nakita natin ang mga pangalan ng Panginoong Iso Kristo na nagpapatuloy na siya ay Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Next week, titingnan natin ang mga katangian ni Kristo na nagpapatuloy na siya ay Diyos na nagkatawang tao upang igalang natin ang anak. Dahil pag ginagalang natin ang anak, ginagalang din natin ang ama. Pastor, hindi ako sure na ako ay saved. Hindi ako sure na ako ay ligtas. Pakitaas ng kamay and we'll pray with you and pray for you. Matuto tayo na igalang natin si Jesus Christ. At yung gumagalang sa Kanya, gumagalang sa Ama. Dahil Siya at ang Ama ay Iisa. Isa sila sa kajosan. Hindi sila isang persona. Tatlo ang persona ng Diyos. Ama, Anak, at Espiritu Santo. Pero ang tatlong yan ay nagkakaisa sa Diyos, kajosan. Wala, hindi tatlo ang Diyos. <laughs> Isa ang Diyos. Banal na Trinity siya. Three in one. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the truths of Scripture. And for the teaching of the Word of God concerning the person of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that He is mighty God. We thank you that He is Lord Jehovah, the Lord of hosts, Lord, the Lord of glory. We thank you that He is the Son of God, that He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. We thank you that He is the great I Am of the Old Testament. And so, Lord, we ask that we would honor him as we honor you. Bless this message, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name.
Amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.